G'day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com here and in this video we're going to show how to sort Lego and keep it sorted. We will also look at some space saving techniques and what I call Tetrising of Lego. I get asked about storage a lot so in this video I'm going to try to give some ideas. I don't believe in a one size fits all approach. I think it depends largely on you and your kids building style and play pattern. Please visit MattElder.com and subscribe so you can always be kept in the loop with new videos and exclusive content regardless of any YouTube algorithm changes. There are generally three approaches to sorting and storing Lego. One, dump everything into a tub and store away. If you only have a small amount of Lego and won't or can't keep things sorted, this is probably going to work best. The downside to this is that it can be a lot harder to find parts. If the majority of the time is spent looking for parts, you're going to be less likely to want to build and end up being less creative. Then there is the constant cleanup of all the Lego at the end of each session. 2. Sort by colour. Literally what it says. You get containers and sort into colours. I.e. all the purple pieces of different shapes and sizes we go into one container. This is good if your building style is more decorative and where colour really matters. So if you were building a fire truck, you'd have like all the red pieces together and be able to build from there. I did this a lot when I was a kid when the color palette was a lot more restricted and there weren't as many colors and options. Naturally, this style of sorting and building is much more conducive for things like mosaics. Complications start arising when you've got pieces which have more than one color and you mentally have to start creating rules around how they get sorted. You know, is it done by dominant color? Is it done by function? And then you have to start remembering all these different rules and things. Three, sort by part type. This is where you look at individual part and sort by it or similar grouping. So all the bricks go together, all the plates go together, all the wheels go together. This is better for when you are more interested in getting a model constructed in a certain way or rebricking other models. Ideally everything would be of the same color but with limited parts you substitute as best as you can. We mainly do the third style with sorting by type, with subsorting by color and having a bit of a temporary building and dumping ground so we'll focus on this more. Originally the kids did build models and have a large tub to store it in. This very quickly became problematic as when they are playing with models they might start to lose bits. Everything would get dumped into the tub and not really played with again. It also didn't encourage them to pull it apart and build other models with it. Thus we went for the approach to sort everything into drawers and then put labels on the drawers. There'll be an affiliate link around the video for these Von House drawers. We get a small commission from each sale and it massively helps support the channel and delivering these free videos. Here is a quick unboxing of one of the Von House 44 drawers so you can see what you get. They are really storage for trades, for screws, nails and bits and pieces. In America I think something similar is these Arco Mills drawers. For me I personally prefer the Von House as these drawers only have all 64 drawers being small whereas the Von House will have 32 of the smaller drawers and then 12 of the larger drawers. I just think that provides a bit more flexibility. We've seen some Americans use these Sterilite drawers, which generally aren't for sale in Europe. I did manage to get some medium-sized ones at a clearance sale once, but otherwise they're prohibitively expensive. They are quite nice, and they do stack reasonably well. The thing I don't like about them is that the drawers don't actually come out. So later on, if you're sorting and rearranging, you can't really take the drawers out from this one and say go and swap it over into this one. So you'd have to take everything out of here, dump the contents of this into that one, then move it over there. Which might not sound like much, but if you're doing that a lot, that becomes a real pain. And even if I just wanted to take a drawer out of parts to go and work on it or take it somewhere, I can't actually do it because it's in the unit. So that aspect really isn't appealing. We like these 44 drawer models because you have a mixture of really small drawers and larger drawers. So it gives you an option to fit really small Lego pieces or really large ones within the same drawer unit. One of the reasons I particularly like these drawers is they actually fit Lego really well and they're an ideal size because you can get 16 studs along and then 6 studs across and then in bricks three bricks high and it fits really snugly without being too tight so these are you know two by eight bricks so I've got two two in the back then two on top and just dropping a couple in so it gives you six studs wide 
and then you got your 16 going back and obviously 16 being a nice multiple number then gives you lots of different combinations of being able to do other things and other stacking so there's three high that will fit in they're not together like super tight so later when you want to get back at them they're relatively easy to, to take apart and they fit in snug but still enough that you can get in and get them out relatively easy or you know worst case scenario you just take the drawer out and tip it out and it's no big deal and it's nice because the the drawer when it's got in the unit itself the two little teeth at the back and the runners so you just got to get them to the end angle them up and pop them out like that so they don't slip everywhere otherwise we have them down low so the kids can easily access them being trade storage units on the back they got holes where you can screw them to the wall or anchor them if you're worried about kids pulling them down on top of themselves they're also handy to be able to carry them to somewhere else if you want to get access to them or do further sorting with them one thing to note is that the backs are open so if they do fall over or get tipped over at the wrong angle stuff can all fall out and get mixed up that said if pieces do get wedged and prevent the drawer from opening from the front you can always come around to the back and then just move things around or take them out so they get unstuck and can open again originally we just got four of these van house drawers initially we sorted them into bricks plates curves and things in between and the last drawer had a combination of technic pieces car parts minifigures and accessories we'd also have a drawer for what i like to call the weird and wonderful it's just pieces that you might only have one or two of or never likely to get in any significant quantities and won't fit nicely in any other sort of categories we'd start off initially by putting them into the smaller drawers and as the smaller drawers filled up and were overflowing then we'd take them and put them into a larger drawer as more and more lego came and we sorted through it we just expanded and added in the number of drawers with spaces allowing for future expansion i generally like to start with the smaller pieces and stud counts on the left and then as you go along add to them so you start off here with one by ones then one by twos two by twos two by threes and so forth and then as you go down you can also add so this is a two by four and then down here you got four by sixes and then six by sixes so then it's really easy to remember as your stud count increases that you're generally going left to right and then sometimes down as well one thing that you run into pretty quickly with lego is running out of space these are two two by four drawers which will be at least full and overflowing but to optimize space like to go through and i just call it a tetrising process trying to get as many of the pieces in a nice snug fit so they can take up the minimal amount of space so you can make the most effective use of space that you have so we can sort of see at the moment this drawer is completely full and you wouldn't be able to get any more in because it won't close and then we've still got some left over here but then we do have on other models um, which are currently being made lots more pieces here's just a base of a little peacock thing one of the boys has made and you've still got lots of two by fours around the outsides of that there. So you just want to make it so that there's plenty of excess capacity that can be used up and use space in a really efficient way. So we'll go through and quickly do a little tetrising process and should be able to get everything into this drawer and still have some space left over and see how we go. through a process of tetrising we're basically able to take what was one and a bit and get them all into one and you could probably still get another couple of bricks along here the other nice thing with doing it like this if you do it by colors then if i'm building anything and i need reds in a two by four you know i can automatically reach in and grab whatever i need or i can start to see okay well i've probably got these are in heights of four so there's 16 there so if i only need 10 i'm good if I need 20 or 30, then I might be running into problems. So by doing this tetrising process, you can always go through and just optimize your space and just push it a little bit more and gain that little bit extra. The next thing which is also important is to label the drawers. Brick Architect has created a PDF with labels for the 1200 most common pieces, which can be downloaded here. They are sorted into major categories such as basic, wall, snot, clip, 
hinge, socket, angle one, two, curved, vehicle, minifig, nature, technic, and other. As a cheap and effective entry point, just print a PDF page, take some scissors, and cut the labels really tight. From here, take some sticky tape or scotch tape, stick the label to it, then stick it onto the drawer. Make sure it's nice and secure. And there we have one labeled drawer. Back into its slot. And job done. In another video, I'll cover the Brother P-Touch Labeler and even how to create your own labels for pieces that aren't part of the 1200 done by Brick Architect. It's a bit more advanced, but the PDF, scissors and tape will go a long way and will be more than enough for the vast majority of people. These labels are really good because they have the pictures on them. So for any kid who can't read yet, they can still understand the pictures and figure out where parts need to go and where to get them from. Most people aren't going to have a clue and know the real technical names of the pieces in any event. How many people would know a fence piece that is a 4x4x2 four by four by quarter round? But if you see the picture, you'll instantly know the piece. It is also great for helping to learn the more technical names and the element ID numbers are also handy for any future ordering. If the drawer is labelled and somebody happens to empty out all the contents for a model, you'll know that that drawer was actually designated for something later on. Without a label, you'd have to remember what was going into that drawer. That doesn't sound that difficult, but when you've got hundreds of drawers, you'll start to need to have to have a super memory. For us, we have this as a designated Lego table. It is actually an old Thomas the Tank Engine train table. This raised track on the edge is great because it stops pieces from rolling off the edge and onto the floor. Underneath it are some larger tubs which can store larger Lego pieces. They can also come out as well for easier access. Having it as a work surface is great as the kids can build models, have works in progress, have a play area, etc. When it comes time to pack up, all the pieces can end up on the table and act as a magnet to attract any pieces throughout the house and be sorted later. It's great because you can get all the Lego off the floor and ensure it doesn't end up in the vacuum cleaner. Which then brings us to the sort fest. Over time, Lego accumulates on the Lego table and does need to be resorted again. We sit down with the kids and have some sort sessions to put everything back again. Naturally, it isn't the kids' most favourite thing to do. This time lapse here took several hours over the course of several sessions over a weekend. That said, it means when they've just dumped things previously on the Lego table and not had to clean it up, it just shifts the job to doing it into one batch, which is going to be a more efficient use of time in the long run. Generally I'll break the models down and group pieces together. The kids will then sort into drawers. Start with the larger pieces as it feels like low hanging fruit and makes it easier to see the smaller pieces. I always think of engineering time and motion studies when doing this and encourage the kids to create strategies to do things in an optimal way. Have Moses go to the mountain, not the other way around. Kids always seem relieved when the last pieces are put away. It's always a matter of striking a balance. Want the kids to explore ideas and models, but not be scared of building because at the end of every session, every part needs to be sorted away perfectly. They also take pride of having a clean Lego table at the end of every sort session. We think the key is a combination of a dedicated Lego table and sort fest. We know some others who have the drawers, take them the time to do the initial sort and create labels. But very quickly, Lego ends up everywhere else and the drawers not being effective and seeming like a waste of time and undoing all the hard work to put together initially. The key seems to be the table and sort fest. Over time, do have some sorted by colour as well. A hangover from the dinosaur and jack-o'-lantern pumpkin projects. Click around the video for free instructions and time-lapse videos on these Lego builds. I know others who use these really useful storage boxes which seem really strong and sturdy for stacking purposes. I haven't looked into them too much so don't know what sort of tray inserts they have which for me would be key to sorting. I think for storing larger items they'd work really well but the downside might not be having quick and easy access if these are stacked on top and the only way to get at them is to unstack them. Here we have sorted over a thousand different part types all of which can easily be accessed in seconds and you don't have to play musical boxes with anything. 
has been going along recently and sorting out some technique. I like to create one of these weird and wonderful drawers where you sort of put all the pieces which don't quite neatly fit within quantities elsewhere. And then over time, you notice that you actually start building up enough to create their own separate drawer. I like to leave the spaces so it allows for future expansion for instances like this. So you can just come along, pop in the new drawer, pop in the new label, is going to be a six tooth small sprocket to be able to print out. Get the back tape off there. There we go. Putting that on there, labels on there. And then just go through weird wonderful drawer, pick out all these sprockets. I think that's got the most now. It's the ones which are left and now just I think there's a bit more. the other sorts of circles and fan blades and things like that. And that's how you can easily expand. The rest just don't have labels on yet, just gotta get around to doing it. Um, it is possible that if you then wanted to completely rejig everything, you just yeah, take whatever drawer out, swap them around. However you want to do it. What do you do for storage? How do you manage Lego? We're always on the lookout for new ways and ideas, so sound off in the comments below. In another video, I'll cover the brother P-Touch Labeler and even how to create and customize your own labels, so be on the lookout for that. Please visit MadElder.com and subscribe so you can always be kept in the loop with new videos and exclusive content regardless of any YouTube algorithm changes. Thanks very much for watching. I know this has been a long video but I wanted to cover in depth a number of aspects so you can go off successfully and implement your own strategies. Here are some other videos you might be interested in. Till next time when we talk about all things LEGO.